welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Heather Lewis and today I'm going to be flipping something that I've never actually flipped before. Surprisingly, in like the 200 flips that I've done in my lifetime, I have never actually done a chest before. And I've always kind of thought about staying away from it just because I didn't think I'd get a lot of money from it. So I always just stayed away, but there wasn't much at the Salvation Army the last time I had gone. And this had been sitting here. It was originally like $30, but then it got marked down to 10. So I was like, at this point, like if it's only $10, there's really no going wrong. I decided to pick it up and here we are. It's a beautiful cedar chest. Like the inside is absolutely gorgeous. I'm surprised that it's not by Lane because I know Lane has a lot of really pretty um, cedar chests, but as far as I know, there's no branded logo or sticker on this, so I don't know where it's from, but it is in pretty good condition. As you can see right away, I did decide to go ahead and throw a base on there. This chest already has a lot of really clean, modern lines other than the original base, so taking that off and throwing this new base on, I think just really completes its modern look. So I know a makeover will definitely help it out, and hopefully it'll be a quick sale, but I'm honestly not sure at all. Typically, I would take the hardware off, but clearly there is none on this piece. So I am going to go ahead and move on to the next thing. And the next thing is actually going to be using some wood filler to fill this gap between the body of the chest and the base. This was the only way that we could throw a base on. So it is a little bit unfortunate that it's going to take so much work to fill this bigger gap. But I think in the end, it'll be worth it. So I'm going to go grab my dry decks and we can get started. Okay, so I've got my dry decks and and I've got a putty knife. I've also got this tilted this way now, so it's a little bit easier to just kind of fill in the gaps here. Even with the base, this project has been very much trial and error. Um, so I'm not 100% sure how this is going to go. I am going to try this out and hope for the best. However, comment down below if you guys think that there is a better solution because there's still a lot that I don't know, and this almost seems like I'm going the hard way. I don't know, maybe there's something easier if you know. Like I said, comment down below, otherwise we're gonna get started. What's really cool about this stuff is that it goes on pink and it dries white. I have a feeling we're gonna be sitting and waiting for a very long time before this is actually dry because I'm gonna have to put quite a bit in there. say right now though I know I'm gonna have to sand the excess back and do a second layer it's almost like it would be easier to like put just a little chunk of wood in here with glue or something and then do this. Although I'm not sure that would be good either. So next time, next time. Also, this container is empty. Um, there, there wasn't that much left anyway, so it's not like I just went through the whole thing. But now I've got to go to the store and get more, so I'll catch up with you guys when I get back. Okay, so I'm back. I got another one. I actually got a, like, way bigger one. This was the size that I had before, and this is what I have now. Um, this was only, like, $8, and it's going to last me forever, so I figure why not? The only concern that I had with getting this bigger one is that although it doesn't dry out as fast as wood filler does, it does still dry out. So I think what I'm going to do is actually transfer however much can fit in here into here so that I'm opening this one and this one stays closed. 
so that it does not all dry out. A little tip for you guys, if you are dealing with things drying out, portion it into smaller portions and you should be good. So I'm gonna do that and then we're just gonna finish this little bit off. And honestly, that might be it for the day because this stuff is gonna have to dry and it's gonna take a while. So we'll see though. Pretty pink color. Oh my gosh. It did take overnight for the wood filler to dry, but it is now morning and you can see it's all white. There's no more pink left, so it is ready to be sanded down. Um, there definitely is a few spots where I should go back and do a second coat. So I am going to do, I guess, a second layer of the wood filler, but luckily it's not going to take a whole 24 hours to dry again because it's going to be a super thin layer. You just don't need as much as I needed last time. So I'm gonna sand this down with probably a medium grit of 220. I'm gonna use my DeWalt palm sander and go ahead and get this sanded down so we can get a second layer on. So I never really clarified what happened here, but basically the sander was just a little bit too harsh on that corner. So unfortunately the corner did fall off and I had to go back and redo a whole second coat because when I tried to put it back together, as you're seeing now, it just wasn't going to work. So I ended up having to redo it, but in the end it all worked out. Okay, so I got the second layer on. There's some pink and it's drying, so hopefully it won't take as long this time, but I guess I'll be back when the second coat is dry. Okay, so that second coat was spackling really did go a long way in leveling this um, part out and just making it smooth. And once there's paint over it, it'll be like it wasn't even there. So that's really awesome. Unfortunately, it did take another 24 hours for that corner to dry, but now it's looking great. I did go ahead and hand sand it instead of using my sander just because I wanted it to be a little more gentle on the corners there and it didn't snap off this time and actually it seems to be pretty stuck on there and pretty sturdy so we are now good obviously though there is a lot of dust everywhere on this piece now because of all the sanding and the spackling so i do have my white bucket with warm water and dawn dish soap i'm also going to be using this microfiber towel because it's going to help a lot in picking up all of the dust that the spackling and the sander had left behind i'm gonna leave a link to some similar down below in case you guys are interested in trying them out they're so much better than any other cloth or paper towel or anything I've ever used. So I really do like these a lot, but I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning this piece down.
give a scuff sand by hand on the body as well. I guess I just didn't think to record it while I was sanding off the second layer of spackling, but I did do that. Make sure that that gets done as well because that's really going to help the paint adhere to the surface. Now, as I was cleaning, I did notice that there were some darker spots on the base, and I think that's from the first time around when I was sanding with the sander and unfortunately I think that's probably going to stay so uh, it's a learned lesson and I've got to be a little bit more careful when I'm sanding and there is a custom base put on I'm hoping that it won't look too bad and it'll actually look natural but um, yeah, that's a little unfortunate. The next step is going to be priming, but before I prime, I do want to get the base taped off. If I do get more paint on it, it won't be that big of a deal because I, I can go back and just hand sand it off, but I want to try to prevent as much of it from getting on in the first place. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape that off and then we can get into priming. Going to use the Zinzer 123 primer. This is a great adhesion primer. I'm not really worried about any bleed through or staining, so I'm not going to use um, like a kills primer, which is meant for that. This is just great for adhesion. I want to make sure to get primer everywhere that I plan on painting, so that's pretty much the entire outside of the body, other than the base that we've taped off. <laughs> Christmas Eve and your Christmas Day spending time with family and friends or whatever else it is that you do on the holidays. Since it's been a few days this primer is clearly dry. I did take the holidays and just a few days to really think about what color I wanted to put on this chest. I was just kind of struggling with what to do because my first instinct is to paint it white and I've been doing that a lot recently on my furniture flips and you guys have been seeing the videos here on my channel and it's hard to create a balance because white sells so fast and with high profits but on the other hand it's probably not very fun to watch me paint things white over and over and over again. I am not painting this chest white but I am going in with my close second which is this cream beige color. I've done it on quite a few of my furniture flips as well, like the dresser and um, like the media table. And I'll pop a few pictures up here of some of the projects that I have done in this color. This is a really beautiful neutral color. And I think with this being my first chest that I've ever flipped, I really have no idea if people are even buying things like this. So I want to give it the highest chance of selling by painting it in a neutral color so that I can have the most eyes on it. Sometimes when you go a little crazy and you paint in some vibrant colors or just other colors that wouldn't fit into many modern homes, um, it can take a lot longer to sell and that piece needs like a specific buyer and that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to attract many eyes so I am going to keep it neutral. Typically this paint only requires two coats so I do think that we could get pretty close to finishing this project today which would be really awesome because I just got my next project and I'm really excited to start that one. So it's time to get this paint on.
back for coat number two once this first coat is dry. is down and it is a little bit later than I would typically film a video but we've got the second coat on it's all dry and I think there's full coverage because the wood filler took longer than expected I want to try to go ahead and finish this project tonight I want to get the tape off and then it still has to be top coated as well so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then tomorrow morning I can take the staging photos which you guys will see at the very end. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this orange tape off and then we'll get into top coating. Now for top coat, I'm gonna be using none other than my favorite Minwax Polyacrylic. Except usually I do use a matte finish and this time I am gonna be using a satin finish. The difference between matte and satin is, for one, matte is a very flat finish, therefore it isn't very shiny. Whereas because satin is a little more glossy, it has a stronger durability level. So when I first started using polyacrylic, I actually really did not want to use a satin. I wanted to use a matte finish just because I like the look of it but recently I decided to try satin and the glossiness of the finish really doesn't bother me as much as I thought it was in fact I actually kind of do like it I guess it really just depends on what I'm going for 